turbulent decade will lay the foundations of a new country. Men hungry for power will poison the peace, only to be confronted by an extraordinary alliance. In the interior, the Indian nations will rise against the conquerors. The British have won, but the peace will be harder than the war. At Fort Mishlamakanak by Lake Superior, the Ojibwe chief Minavavana issues a warning to a group of English traders. Englishmen, although you have conquered the French, you have not yet conquered us. We are not your slaves. These lakes, these woods and mountains were left us by our ancestors. Englishmen, your king has not sent us any presents, nor entered into any treaty with us. Therefore, he and we are still at war. The war fever builds. Since the conquest, the English have gone far beyond the Ohio Valley and into the Great Lakes area, occupying all the French forts, pouring ever deeper into the interior. Pontiac is a war chief of the Ottawa nation. He calls for total annihilation of the English. It is important for us, my brothers, that we exterminate from our lands this nation which seeks only to destroy us. You see as well as I that we can no longer supply our needs as we have done from our brothers, the French. The English sell us goods twice as dear as the French do. When I ask the English commander anything for our sick, he refuses with the reply that he has no use for us. You can see as well as I that they are seeking our ruin. All the British frontier forts are surrounded. Michilimackinac, Wiatnon, Pitt, St. Joseph, Edward Augustus, Niagara, and the biggest of all, Detroit. For five weeks, Pontiac's war bands massacre settlers and hold the interior in terror. But the British conceive their own cruelty. A British officer writes to his commander with a plan. I will try to inoculate the Indians by means of blankets that may fall into their hands, taking care, however, not to get the disease myself. It is a pity to oppose good men against them. The blankets are infected with smallpox. Fragments are inserted into silver boxes by soldiers immune to the virus. The British are using germ warfare. The boxes are given to a delegation of Ottawa Indians at Fort Pitt. They are told they contain medicine, which should not be opened till they return home. All summer, Pontiac has heard rumors of a peace between France and Britain. He is finally convinced the rumors are fact and sends a message to the commander of Fort Detroit. My brother, the word from my father, the King of France, to make peace, I accept. All my young men have buried their hatchets. 
I know you can forget the bad things that have happened this past while. For my part, I shall forget, which you can show me how to do, in order to think only of good things. The war parties return to their tribal lands. Some carry the little silver boxes. Andrew Blackbird, the adopted son of an Ottawa chief, described what happened. Accordingly, after they reached home, they opened the box. Pretty soon burst a terrible sickness. Their tradition says it was indeed awful and terrible. Lodge after lodge was totally vacated. Nothing but dead bodies lying here and there in their lodges. The whole coast of Arbor Krash, which is said to have been a continuous village some 15 or 16 miles long, was entirely depopulated and laid waste. The British commander wrote later that by sending germs instead of British soldiers, he had saved the lives of better men. But while these people are dying, history is taking a fateful turn. The British government is looking for lasting peace on the frontier it decides to recognize the North American interior as Indian land. Britain issues a royal proclamation. Indian land will be protected by the king. There will be no encroachment by American settlers and speculators. We do hereby strictly forbid, on pain of our displeasure, all our loving subjects from making any purchases or settlements whatever or taking any possession of any of the lands above reserved without our special leave and license. The proclamation will stir the American colonies to political fury, and its legacy will shape the continent for centuries to come. <laughs> 